It's a joy to be with everyone and to come back to this august place. <laughs> and great thanks to Parmaji and all the organizers of this wonderful day and all the excellencies, honorable guests and friends of yoga. As has been just highlighted, um, yoga is certainly not only a physical practice, uh, although the physical exercises, the breathing exercises, the different aspects of the uh, physical part of yoga are profound and very beneficial and excellent in their effects on prevention and even management and cure. The Vedic knowledge that comes with uh, this tradition uh, includes Tapatya Veda, housing conditions, includes Ayurveda, how to use herbs and plants, and different aspects that are very profound and are being more and more researched these days, showing their beneficial effects in all aspects of life. There is, however, one area which is most important that is being usually ignored and that is coming back now to being recognized as an essential aspect of yoga. And that is the aspect of consciousness. Consciousness is a very abstract reality. It is that which allows us to be aware, that aspect of ourself which makes us think and feel and experience and dream and plan. And so far it has been, in the Western understanding, considered almost as an all or none phenomenon, which means either you have consciousness or you don't have consciousness. But consciousness is a very profound aspect of reality, which has different uh, depths in it, different broadness, different widths, and you can be drowsy, that is also a conscious aspect. You can be alert, you can be dreaming, you can be in deep sleep, you can be in altered states of consciousness, in coma, in vegetative states. And therefore, more and more we understand that consciousness has different aspects, different layers of its reality. In particular, if we just want to define it as having depths, for example, it's how alert you are. When you are exposed to a stressful situation or a demanding situation, there are mechanisms in the nervous system that make you very alert because you have to respond to the potentially dangerous and, and threatening situation and you respond either by running away or by fighting and that is included in the nervous system by activating certain parts of the brain. This leads to a very very high alert state but it's also very narrow because you are dealing with a very very specific situation and you have to deal with it within a short period of time. So under stress there is very high alertness but there is very narrow awareness. You lose actually, and this has been studied, you, you lose widths of, of vision, of intelligence. Take an example, pilots have been known, for example, uh, when they are not well trained, if they have a little problem in the cockpit, they focus on it so much, they forgot to fly the plane. And there has been accidents like this that have happened and that led all the training of the pilots to make them what we can call field independent. Which means whereas they deal with a specific situation, they have to have in their awareness broader understanding. We would call this the width or the breadth, if you like, of awareness. When you want to deal with any situation, the more variables, the more aspects of the situation you can compute, you can take in your intelligence, the better your decision is going to be. And also the more alert you are, the better you're going to make 
in terms of coming out of it. Because if you kind of have a relaxed, broad awareness, but you are in a drowsy mood, sleepy mood, you also cannot handle the situation properly. So what you need is very high alertness, and yet, at the same time, broad understanding, broad comprehension. And part of yoga, the techniques of yoga, are actually to develop this ability to have broad comprehension and yet very sharp, narrow, alert understanding. And, and we have done studies on this, even on pilots, who really become very alert and there are some army pilots who have been using this in different places, different countries, where they can see there is a very sharp ability to focus, yet very broad alertness and awakening. Now, this is not just theoretical. If we study the way the human nervous system works, we find that this has implications on a lot of aspects of health and functioning. And in particular, <coughs> Amarjitji has asked that we mention something more on the level of prevention because of the NNH, NHS requirements and the celebration this year and also wanting to save a lot of uh, the expenses that are being faced to save life, to improve health, but also to be able to manage the health system better. And so I'll be focusing on this aspect of the yoga, which is the development of consciousness in a way that is systematic and see how beneficial this can be on different aspects of life. In order to have something scientific, we have to know how it works. It's not just some imaginary nice thing, but something that is understandable from a theoretical perspective. The mind and psychology has an influence on the nervous system. So when you think a thought, when you have fear, when you have anxiety, a feeling or a thought has an effect on your nervous system and that influences the uh, part of the brain which is called the endocrine system, the neuroendocrine part, which influences the endocrine system which releases hormones, and that can influence the immune system and the entire functioning of the body. We know now that from awareness, your quality of awareness, quality of consciousness, you can <coughs> influence the mind. The mind is the psychological part which influences the nervous system. As we can see here, that influences the endocrine system and that can influence the immune responses. We know exactly how this works now and we have the pathways and we know the hormones that are secreted and how they influence different parts of the body, even on the cellular level, on the digestive system, on the cells, on the immune system, the ability to defend against disease, the ability to heal for the body healing process, the inflammatory process, which is a major problem in heart disease and different conditions. So that these are the pathways, of course uh, it's not the time to go into the fine details of how it works. This chart shows that what happens in a stressed situation. When the brain is stressed and there is a demand on the brain, the blood flow, rather than going to the deciding parts, to the intelligent parts, to the more human, we call it like, parts, they go, the blood flow goes to the more old brain, which is the defense part, the place where you want to really act, you want to fight, or you want to run away. The fight and flight response, which we all know. And therefore, some parts of the brain are not being properly nourished by blood. And that's why we have seen that in stress situations, there are actually holes in the brain. I mean, the holes, of course, physically, it's not that part of the brain goes, but this is in terms of blood flow. You have parts of the brain that are not nourished. Whereas when you are in a situation of rest, there is an optimal functioning of the nervous system. 
So we have tried different techniques. That is in the different techniques also of yoga. That is different techniques of focused attention. Uh, <coughs> another techniques, focused attention is like concentration. Then you have open monitoring, which is sitting and, you know, learning not to mind things and uh, just to be aware of things, but not to mind them. Kind of the mindfulness aspect of technique, mindfulness meditations. And then what we call the autonomic, the automatic self-transcending, which means the ability for the mind to settle down to a very deeper level in awareness, which is uh, part of what is called transcendental meditation, a simple technique that allows the mind to settle down, guided by its own desire to rest and go deeply into the self, into the inner being. It was found that this technique of transcendental meditation creates the highest level of brain coherence, which means your brain, suppose your brain is like many, many computers with different, different parts in it, different chips sitting there in the brain. If they all talk to each other, it means you have like a supercomputer that is working. But if it is disorderly, it means that different parts work differently and there is incoherence in the brain. It was shown that transcendental meditation creates a very high coherence, which leads to higher creativity, better reflexes, uh, better uh, awareness, deeper awareness, and even better functioning, better grades for the student, even the intelligence quotient, the IQ is improved, and concept learning is improved. So there are all these benefits that have been shown. There is increased physiological relaxation, and this has been compared between the different techniques and we find that transcendental meditation has a very, very deep physiological level of rest. And this has been done on 32 different studies, longitudinal studies, with thousands of people practicing these different techniques. So that leads to, <coughs> you know, trait anxiety reduction, which is when you compare it to different approaches, you find that this yoga technique, which is a TM, Transcendental Meditation Technique, has much, much deeper level of uh, stress release and relaxation and rest. Threat anxiety is a way to describe stress uh, and the reduction in stress is very clear in this process. This is also a meta-analysis of 146 different independent peer-reviewed studies. So there are changes in blood pressure, which are very profound. The, the whole human physiology gets normalized. And one of the greatest problems in modern time is blood pressure contributing to stroke, to heart, heart problems, to kidney problems, atherosclerosis. And we see here that even within a few months of practicing transcendental meditation, there is a reduction which is very significant in blood pressure. This has led very uh, important release for even the American Heart Association uh, to say clearly that transcendental meditation should be used and it is significant in lowering blood pressure and improving heart disease and it's even more significant than certain medicines or drugs that are used without any side effects in this particular case. Something is very interesting is that, and not expected actually, that was studied on diabetes, and those who practice transcendental meditation have reduced diabetes, and even studied in coronary heart disease patients as compared to other techniques and to other uh, programs of uh, self-improvement. Atherosclerosis as a result is reduced significantly. We can see here uh, longitudinal studies and these are individuals who are normal control groups. They have over time increased atherosclerosis and people who practice transcendental meditation has very significant reduction in atherosclerosis. Ultimately, <coughs> even if you look at the death rate, the, this 
program of yoga, actually, a transcendental meditation, which is the mental yoga, leads to a significant reduction. Here we can see 66% reduction over five years in death rates from heart attack and stroke through those who practice this technology. This led many art to many articles and <coughs> support from even the American Medical Association, the American Heart Association, and there are insurance companies that offer this program now as part of their training. Overall, just to summarize, it's not just heart disease, it's not just stroke and heart attack. There is a decrease in hospital admission rate in all categories of diseases. And we can see here that we have, of course, heart, we have, but also different uh, genetic problems that are overcome. There is <coughs> even the reduction from injuries, uh, tumors, and all of these other factors across the board, we can see that there is a reduction in those who practice transcendental meditation. If you look at this and you, you wonder why these two are the same, in fact, it looks like there is no change. Well, this is admission to the hospital due to pregnancy, so there is no change in that factor. <laughs> This chart is very interesting. It's a 14-year longitudinal study, so there is a follow-up for 14 years. And people that practice transcendental meditation from the age of 65 on, we just uh, tried this study. And you can see here that <coughs> physicians' expenses, because we, this is what we want to do. We want to prevent the use and to have the NHS skip a lot of the money and be very able to help people. You can see here on this line the expenses of the people and they follow, the different groups have been followed together and then this is a starting point where, where they started practicing transcendental meditation. And here you see the graph splitting. The others, they continue to rise in medical expenses and medical expenses rise sharply actually after a few years. Those who practice transcendental meditation have had, at the beginning, about 14% reduction in expenses, from physicians' expenses. And after about five years, it's up to 70% reduction in medical expenses. This is a long-term study which shows the very important and extreme beneficial effects of what we are really offering from this Vedic tradition, this tradition of yoga, on the mental level, transcendental meditation. There is also, even in the young people and uh, growing up, there is a reduction in the aging process. The whole physiology is younger uh, physiologically than in chronologically. So people are actually younger if you study different parameters then their age is selling. So there is also improvement in intellectual performance, and that is, uh, I mentioned, the field independence, practical intelligence, mental efficiency, and fluid intelligence, which are different aspects of intellectual performance. There is great coherence in the brain activity, great enjoyment of life, happiness, and prevention of disease on all these levels. <coughs> so this is another study recently with the flow, blood flow. We can see that more of the blood flows to the frontal lobes, so there is a better decision making. And that is very important in when we consider prevention, is how alert you are, how awake you are, you will be able to do less uh, uh, have less problems, do more with less uh, energy expenditure, and life is much more easy to carry on with if you are healthy, happy, and settled in your mind than if you are stressed and tired. Just think of the day when you wake up and you have not had a good night's sleep, then even small problems, they appear like big mountains. But if you had a good rest, a good sleep, then you are able to resolve your issues. And 
Imagine if you have a technique which is very simple, morning and evening, 20 minutes, that allows you to gain very profound rest and relieve those stresses and strains that have been accumulated over time. Then you are more able to deal with situations and circumstances. Not only you have removed the stresses from your body and mind, but also you are less likely to be exposed and strained by stress because you are more flexible, you're more intelligent, you're more awake, you're more happy, and therefore it's a positive kind of cycle, not a vicious circle, but a positive, <laughs> positive reinforcement uh, on the system that gives us benefits in all directions. So we have used this in extreme cases, for example, return to prison. We have seen over three years how we have as much as almost 50-60% less recidivism from those who practice this technique uh, compared to those who do not, uh, that are in control studies. So there is improvement in all levels. And recently, uh, the Veterans Administration in the United States is using this technique officially among the veterans. And it has been shown to be the, the most effective way for post-traumatic stress syndromes. We know that more people are killed from suicide, from coming back from war situations, than actually in the war conditions. And that is because of the high stresses. And now we find a very, very important and very significant reduction in stress compared even to other techniques, such as simple mindfulness technology. Here we see many academies around the world are using it. It reduces also attention deficit uh, and hyperactivity disease. And there are many, many schools and universities around the world that are using it for its improved academic performance. And since no one is an island and consciousness is something that is all permeating, when you improve your own individual consciousness, you are actually improving the consciousness of society. And we have looked at that. Maharishi, who brought this knowledge, said that there must be an effect in society. And what we have found is when a small percentage of people in society practice this technique, which means go back to themselves and transcend, then there is reduction in crime, reduction in violence, and increased uh, coherence and reduction in conflict in society. So we did actually study that and we found that it really happens and there is a logic for it. If we look at the modern findings in physics, it tells us that on the surface level, the surface aspects of life, there is a deeper level which is what we call the unified field. So there is the classical physics, there is the quantum mechanics, the quantum field theory, and ultimately, there is a unified field theory which unifies all aspects of the outer, outer universe. And what we are saying is our technique actually allows the mind to experience and enliven this field of pure being, which is the inner self, which is consciousness. And that is how it creates its effects on the different levels. So there are these techniques and then ultimately we have the surface thinking and transcendental meditation takes us to a deeper level of awareness which is ultimately pure consciousness and the unified field. And this is how through transcending we have effects on society and this has been studied. So not only the yoga system has a technology of consciousness, but it has a technology to improve social behavior. And you don't have to go and explain to everyone how it works. Even if the general population has a small percentage of people who practice this technology, there is a greater coherence. Because we are part of a wholeness. And when that wholeness is settling down through a few people practicing this technology, there is a change in the atmosphere, change in the stress in society, and that makes people feel better and behave in a better way. And this has also been studied scientifically. Of course, this technique comes from an ancient tradition. They are the scientists of consciousness. 
the modern life has allowed us to explore the physical world and the West, and these great individuals have been researching and studying awareness, studying consciousness, looking inwards, and they are actually the researchers of ancient times, and they have come to us with techniques that are very powerful, that we can use to make life on Earth much better than we have ever imagined it could be. And I'm grateful to my teacher, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, who brought this knowledge to us uh, from this Vedic tradition. And thank you for all those who organized the Yoga Day and this wonderful gathering. <laughs>